This is KGW News at Sunrise. Washington County is swapping out its current ambulance service with hopes the new company will improve response times. What other factors commissioners considered before making that switch? Plus. We don't want to have to choose between getting a prescription and paying our rent. It's not a choice anyone should have to make, but it could happen to some seniors living in a low-income housing complex in Tigard. Decades-old affordability rules are about to expire. Coming up this morning, hear more from the seniors trying to stop that. And we're also talking weather this morning. Let's start with this shot from Eric Patterson, our Sunrise photographer behind the wheel of Drive 8. So he's keeping an eye on some road conditions around the area uh, right now in and around the West Hills. He's up on Skyline Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a crew that's checking out conditions on and near the Oregon Coast Range. So a lot of coverage coming your way. Of course, we also have Rodney Hill with us on this Wednesday morning. So I say good morning. Welcome to Sunrise. I believe it's Wednesday, February 22nd. And I believe my kids are waking up this morning hoping for a snow day. Well, there's always hope, isn't there? <laughs> Let's go to the uh, watch warning map. <laughs> Couple new players real quick. The purple color continues to be the winter storm warnings for the Coast Range and the Cascades. The new players issued last night for today through tonight is an advisory for snow. This is mainly for the mid and south valley. It's on a line uh, generally south of Wilsonville all the way down to Eugene. So the Weather Service believing this is the best chance to see something stick on the ground today and tonight. And then starting tonight, a wind chill advisory in baby blue. This is Portland up through southwest Washington. Remember, east winds start to blow today. Now, the wind chills overnight tonight in the valley expected to be as low as 5 degrees to 15 degrees above zero with temperatures tonight low to mid 20s. So all that's coming up right now. The green in Portland is rain. We've got uh, everything else pretty much a mix of snow. There's a little bit of rain out in Hillsboro. We still don't have east winds yet. So we're not going to see the snow levels significantly drop and change everything to snow until the east wind kicks out of the gorge. That will happen eventually a little bit later this morning. Right now, well above freezing 37. All the metro numbers are generally 34, 37 degrees on average. And I keep a steady in the 30s throughout the day. Now, eventually it will be all snow in the air, I think, for the most part, but not expecting any of it to stick here in the lower elevations. Chris McGinnis is in right now. And let's get a look at the lower elevation roads right now. Live look at Highway 26 up near the zoo. Might see some snowflakes there. Obviously, we had uh, Eric Patterson up at Skyline Boulevard and Burnside up at close to 1,000 feet. We are seeing snow up there, but the freeway right now on that side of town actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. We'll switch gears real quick and see what it looks like over on the uh, north side of town. This is I-5 near Lombard again, just wet roads there. But as we go a little farther north, we'll take you up to the La Center area. Uh, we've got some snow coverage on the side of the freeway up in northern Clark and southern Callitz County. And as we switch gears and take you farther south into the Willamette Valley, I want to show you that one more time. This is I-5 down near the Sutherland area, so getting down towards Eugene and Point South. Snow on the roads there. And of course, uh, I know we have Bryant Clerkley out in the Coast Range. She's going to show us some pictures of this. It's a winter wonderland out there, Christine. Thank you so much, Chris. And speaking of Bryant, yeah, you may have heard Drew talking about our various crews in the area. Bryant, I see there is snow behind you. You're out there. What, are you in the coast range at this point? Hey, Christine. Yeah, I'm at the Sunset Rest area. This is in between Portland and Seaside. And check out how much snow we got here. Look at my feet. So I'm guessing that's a couple inches right now. And then we had a snow plow just come through this rest area parking lot and kind of clean it up a little bit, but it's still pretty snow packed. So if you're headed to the coast range this morning, you want to drive slowly. Once you get over a thousand feet, that's when the snow starts falling pretty heavily and the roads have a dusting over them. So like I said, you want to be careful. We did see a snow plow come through um, the coast range as we were coming here. So it might make our drive back just a little bit safer but yeah it is a winter wonderland out here we did on the way here um to uh from portland to uh this area it was a little bit of a rain snow mix but like i said as you keep climbing in elevation you're going to start to see that heavy snow come down so just be careful if you're coming out this way this morning christine Okay, thank you, Bryant. All right, Rod Hill will have more weather coverage here shortly, but right now we want to get to some of our other top stories this morning. Washington County is set to change direction when it comes to ambulance service. After public records show that current ambulance provider Metro West 
wasn't meeting county benchmarks. As KGW's Catherine Cook explains, it looks like Washington County will now turn to one of Metro West's competitors. Thank you, commissioners. Any opposed? Thank you, commissioner. The motion carries three to one. Thank With you. that, Washington County commissioners cleared the way to award American Medical Response a service agreement. They joined Clackamas, Multnomah, and Clark counties, which already used the ambulance service. County officials say AMR's proposal scored highest, beating out Falk, which serves in Salem, and Metro West, which had been serving Washington County since 1997. Commissioners say they took the months-long process seriously. You know, we're talking about life and death, and, and these services matter. It's why county officials say they've long wanted to update and improve their emergency medical services, opting for a centralized dispatch system, one that would allow them to share information between the ambulance provider, fire departments, and 911. The new agreement would also track new response metrics like clinical outcomes, in addition to response times. We have information about how our communities have changed. Washington County requires ambulances to respond on time to 911 calls at least 90 percent of the time. Public records show Metro West fell short of meeting that benchmark in recent years, dropping to around 83 percent in 2021. In June, a Metro West spokesperson cited staffing issues throughout the healthcare industry as the reason. I would say that staffing has been a big issue, definitely, along with call volume, the types of patients, you know, with the surges in COVID. Um, there's a lot of a lot of different factors that come into play there. Metro West is an Oregon based company. AMR is a national corporation. Operations manager Robert McDonald says that will have an immediate impact. I mean, we're going to be able to get the ambulances needed brand new. That's really hard to do in this industry right now with supply chain issues. Um, we're going to bring all new equipment. As for personnel, McDonald suggested those currently employed by Metro West may still have a future serving Washington County with them. Ideally, we'd like to engage them early and often. We want to be able to show them what it would look like at AMR when we come over. Uh, we really want to see them in our uniforms doing the work for us. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Other headlines this morning. I want you to take a look at this. These are dog nappers, and they're accused of stealing pugs in two different incidents at the Critter Cabana in Wilsonville. The first happened on January 29th. A man in a gray hoodie and a woman with red hair walked out without paying for a puppy. Then it happened again four days later. This time, police say a bald man and a woman with black and pink hair took another pug. Take a close look at the photos. If you recognize these guys, you're asked to call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Also, this surveillance video shows an attempted carjacking in the Hazeldell neighborhood. A man stopped to fill his tires with air at the AM PM on Northeast 7th Avenue. That's when a guy climbs into the driver's seat and tried to take off, but the car owner jumped into the passenger seat. Authorities say the two fought inside and the suspect eventually ran away. He hasn't been caught yet, so if you have any information about this crime, you're asked to contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office. And finally, an avalanche is believed to have killed three climbers in Washington on Sunday. They were with a group of six on Kolchak Peak near Leavenworth when one of them triggered the slide. Survivors told the sheriff's office three of the four people who fell were buried in snow. The fourth was injured and evacuated by rescue teams. Climbers have not been publicly identified, but they're reportedly three travelers from the East Coast in their 50s and 60s. And those are some of your Wednesday headlines. All right, our top story this morning is the weather or the possibility of snow around your neighborhood. Here's the question. Do you have any snow where you're waking up this morning? If you do, we'd love to see it. You can share your snow photos with us. 503-226-5088 is our text line. Again, that's where you can send photos this morning. So Rod, uh, a few minutes ago, we saw Eric Patterson up along Skyline Boulevard in the West yeah, Hills. Yeah. Uh, that neighborhood definitely has snow this morning. Are they yeah. at 1,000 feet? Is that yeah, I think Skyline, Chris McGinnis knows this stuff better than I do, the, the memorization of the elevation. I think Skyline is just above, I mean, okay. excuse me, just below it. They have a cemetery right up there. It's at 900 feet. Yeah, I'm not I used yet. to live there. <laughs> I do not miss snow days. So we do have snow at that <laughs> elevation this morning, but yes. uh, a lot of other places no snow. Yeah, right mostly no snow. The snow level during the day yesterday, as we thought, generally held just above a thousand feet for sticking snow. We do have snow in the coast range this morning down 
um, closer to 500 feet. And I do think the snow level during the day today will slowly start to come back, uh, come down a little bit. Right now it's a mix of rain and green in Portland and then a mix of white, which is all the snow shower activity. Here's the West Hill. Interesting how the radar picks it up, right? So there's the higher West Hills. That's snow, at least falling in the air. And then we have uh, the rain out in uh, Washington County and Hillsborough. It's cloudy up top. We're above freezing. The metro temperatures uh, are generally held last night between about 34 and 37. Let's see where we are right now. West Lynn, Oregon City down to 33. Sandy at 1,000 feet, 33. But everybody's above freezing, right? So nobody's got any snow sticking on the ground, at least not in these uh, observation points. 34 out in Sheridan and Dallas. McMinnville's in the mid-30s. Salem and Kaiser in the mid-30s as well. Temperatures are everything today. 34 up in Kelso. It is freezing now out in the gorge. 32 it was mainly above freezing overnight out in the gorge, where it was mostly rain out along the Columbia River as well. Here's future cast 8 o'clock this morning. So it's showery precipitation again today, which will be mainly rain or a mix, uh, a wet mix at the coast. I think inland areas, generally speaking, will end up seeing more snow showers than rain showers, but there will be a potential mix. Here we are at 11.30 this morning, and I'm going to stop it at this point because I don't believe, really overly believe anything it's showing me. Here's a look at what the winds are. The two weather models I looked at this morning showed east winds kicking in between 6 and 8 o'clock this morning. But notice Futurecast. This is a different weather model. This is 8.30 this morning. It's a south wind. Follow the arrows. Here we are at 4 this afternoon. Now it is east winds coming out of the gorge. As a forecaster, I'm waiting for that east wind to kick out of the gorge because when that happens, snow levels will definitely fall to 500 feet and maybe lower, um, and the air will definitely start to feeling a lot colder outside. But all of a sudden, there seems to be a mystery of when we lose the south and west wind and get to an east wind, which means today's forecast is in flux. Until we get the east wind, we'll definitely stay well above freezing and just see no sticking snow uh, in most of the metro area. 39 today, maybe 40 if that east wind doesn't kick in until later on. Tomorrow it's just flurries, nothing sticking, not enough to stick. Partly cloudy, 32. Notice the low tonight, 24. Friday, sunny, 20, 38. Rain returns on Sunday. When the east winds kick, there is a wind chill advisory tonight for Portland and southwest Washington. It could feel as cold as 5 to 10 degrees above zero if you're going to be out later tonight. Back to you.